I'm Benjamin Barber, I'm a graphic designer in Barcelona. I run uh, with a few friends my, my own little uh, studio in the center. We are Achos. Achos comes from uh, muchachos, which means the young, young people, young kids. So as students, we, yeah, we just decided to take this adventure. See? Take on this adventure. No. Hello, hello, hello. I'll stay here. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, we do graphic design, we do a lot of web design and communication campaigns. And today I'm going to talk about what we like doing most, which is doing uh, personal projects. Because personal projects allowed us to be here today to get us visible, to put us on, in the market, basically. Because uh, obviously as a student, it's hard to find uh, good clients and clients that uh, believe in you. So we decided to believe in ourselves a bit. And why we do this is because, per one, uh, personal projects are fun. They're fun to, to develop. They have no deadlines. They, well, you learn a lot about yourself. And uh, yeah, well, the most important part is that by, doing, by dedicating some time to yourself, we uh, learn that we get more client work. So instead of going knocking on doors, we just close the door, lock ourselves in, and develop ideas to see if we can continue growing. So today I'm going to talk about a personal project that started, started as a, we, did a, we developed as students. Uh, coming out of university, we were in this position where, OK, we need work. We don't know what to do. And uh, we came up with this idea, which was instead of, uh, well, everyone knows Sagmeister and Walsh, yes? Uh, they're one of the biggest design studios in, in, in creative studios in the world, and as students, we always looked up at them very highly. And uh, apart from the work, what we really got inspired by was their website. I don't know if you know this site. It, um, it's a live streaming cam in his studio that shows you how he works every day. You can go in at any time. And they have these uh, big buttons on the floor that let you navigate through the site. So, we were looking for work. We were looking at Sagmeister a lot, and we were thinking Sagmeister must be loaded with work, so he must be able to give us some. So instead of going and asking him for work, we decided to go in and just take it from him. So here's what we did, so you understand, because it's a bit uh, ambiguous at first. <coughs> we won't work, yeah, sorry. And oh, yeah, this is the piece we created. We recreated their studio and basically photoshopped ourselves into his studio and took his work, his most valuable piece. So now we have this piece. We, uh, it was by coincidence we started getting work organically. We got a client, so we had to put this, well, we didn't need work anymore. So we put this project aside. We didn't really find the moment. And uh, yeah, it wasn't until a few years later a uh, client came by, which is Fuel Barcelona. They uh, do this, a series of conferences for young talents, young creatives, like High Potentials Today. And uh, what well, came up to I, our, our mind straight away was, OK, these are students. They're looking for work. They, uh, they're all in the situation we were two years ago when we developed the Sagmeister robbery. So we applied our personal project to a client work, basically. This was the result. All the, the, new, the new talent of Barcelona are now thieves. They're going to take the work of the greatest. They're going to be the next generation someday. So that was the message. <coughs> to launch this, um, oh, sorry. Um, we had this uh, concept applied to the client work, and we asked the client if we could run our personal project alongside with this independently, simultaneously. So we found, finally found a reason to launch our uh, our little idea and try and get our message across to New York. So to, 
to share this, uh, this project, we had to make it sound credible because it was pretty ridiculous just to steal the, a button of a floor. So what we decided to do as the whole concept was about stealing, we uh, decided to grab Creative Review's blog and steal their, their blog without asking for permission. What we found is that creativereview.info wasn't bought by Creative Review, so we bought it. We copied their, their blog, identical. So when you clicked on the links, it would take you back to .co.uk, but if you, no one would realize that this is not the real Creative Review. Also, what we did is we hijacked all the banners. So there was banners for our clients, banners for us, and banners for our co-working studio all over the page. So we really exploited Creative Review well. And uh, what happened six hours later after posting this and sharing it with a few friends is Sagmeister received the news two years later and replied in a nice way. We were very, we were very thankful for him to, to play along with us. <coughs> and he posted our fake link. He didn't even realize that it wasn't the real creative review. And uh, what happened then after Sagmeister speaks is for the, the whole week, everyone was talking about this mysterious robbery. No one knew what it was. People at our, the student festival did know what was happening. So in Barcelona, it was like a little joke from Barcelona to the world, basically. And um, yeah, we, we, <laughs> once Sagmeister posted our fake link, we were starting to get worried because obviously we stole some a big blog's website. <laughs> And uh, what we did straight away, sent them a message, giving them some uh, nice wording, saying there we stole the work of the, the greatest cre uh, creative of the world, and we stole the best blog in the world, just so they wouldn't get angry. And they took it really well. They asked us for the .info domain, so we we gave we we we, we gave them the the domain for the good the fair play they uh, they showed to us, and. Uh, what was funny in this email, you could see the thread of previous emails, internal emails of Creative Review while this was happening. And they were also very confused and they had loads of different theories of what was happening at the moment. So this went on for a week. So what happened by approaching and just going for, the, for this idea is that Creative Review the following week revealed who did this, this stunt uh, in an interview for us, and this started spreading around different blogs, like Boom, and then it still echoes today, where we still get oh, visibility out of this project. So basically, yeah, well, we all replied. This was all great. All the news was great, but what really, what really meant a lot for us was that Sagmeister listened to us, and for the day we did the the stunt, he covered on his website, his work uh, button. He didn't know what was happening, but it, I don't know why, he just played along with us, it was, it was great. So now we had a personal project completed, everyone was talking about it, and now the idea is to, from this personal project, create more work for us, client work. So what we did, as well, all this was uh, going on, while the news was fresh, we sent emails to different agencies around the world and said to them, Oh, sorry, this is what Sagmeister Studio looks like now. <laughs> they just moved. And so we said to the to other studios, if you don't collaborate with us or give us work, your studio will be next. And funny enough, this worked. We sent an email to Tim Nolan at uh, Huge, and he came back with a very interesting project that fits our, st our style of doing things perfectly because when you present yourself with a personal project, you present yourself as who you are, not through a client filter, basically. So yeah, this is a way, f a g really good way for us to uh, get our, ourselves out there and enjoy our job, basically. <laughs> Thank you.